Hi. Today I'm going to do some experimentation with auto vectors. And I've installed two compilers. First, a new GCC compiler, 472. And then I installed one proprietor compiler under Intel. Like that. Uh, they are pretty new, both of them. So I have one VEC executable, which I want to build, where I type make. And it's made up of this VEC GCC.O and main.o. Main.o is created from main.c, and VEC GCC S is created from a C file, which is then transformed to an assembly file, because the purpose of this is to just uh, examine the generated assembly file. So I put all the boring stuff into main and the interesting stuff in the C file here. And I have a, an S rule down here, which generates Intel and GCC versions. And they both come from this vexc.c. If we start with the main, it defines one function, v4 add, and the arguments double arrays. This restrict means that the array memory doesn't overlap. So the EST, the definition, and the first source and the second source do doesn't overlap. This const means that S1 and S2 won't be modified by the v4add function. All this is hints to the compiler. So I define three arrays of doubles, A, B, C. This attribute align means that the beginning of the arrays should be on a 32-byte boundary. That also has to do with the assembly code because it runs faster if it's aligned on 32-byte boundaries. And then it's an init function here which just initializes A and B array to something and then calls this V for add. It's implemented in here. First it's a strange define, it's so I can use the same syntax for both the GCC and Intel compiler. And this assumed align macro tells the compiler, it's a hint, that all three inputs here, DST, S1 and S2 are all aligned on 32-byte boundaries. And then the for loop, the destination is equal to source1 plus source2. So in the first iteration of the loop, I here, index counter will be zero. The value of d DST of zero is set to S1 of zero plus S2 of zero. And then next iteration, I will be one, and so on. Now let's see what assembly code is generated by the make S rule. Make S. It runs both of them. Here are all the flag size to see. Some warning flags and the C99 standard, the restrict keyword. The architecture core i7 means only use SSE instructions, don't use AVX instructions. O3 turns on auto vectorization and VEC report prints out to standard out what the compiler has done with auto vectorization. S creates assembly in the .s file here. And the uh, report at line 16, a loop was vectorized. And then GCC is run, and uh, that also report at line 16, a loop was vectorized. Here's line 16, it's this loop. And it was vectorized. Let's see the GCC code first. What does it do? If you remember the rule, dcdex, di, dest, si, dest s1, and dx, dest s2. So, it loads the first value from S2 into XMM register, then the adds val values from S1 to the XMM register, and the result is stored in DI register. And now, if you look up XMM, you see that XMM is 128 bits long, and we have doubles, one double is 8 bytes long, so 128 bits is two doubles. So here are the first two doubles, and then the second two is at offset 16. Second two are loaded to XMM0, and second two are added to XMM0, and put into the destination. Let's see what the Intel code does. Now, it does something similar, and it even prints out what the parameter names are. SI is first source array, DX is second source array, and DI is the destination array. So it takes first source array, loads into XMM0, first two values, and then loads the second two values into XMM1, then adds 
first two values to XMM0 from the S2 array, adds second two values from the S2 array to XMM1, and then moves the first two to the destination and moves the second two to the destination. So the integral was a little bit easier to read. Now this AVX extensions, which I didn't talk about yet, but if we go to the make file, the architecture, I put architecture to core i7, put architecture core i7 AVX, and AVX, instead of 128 bits, it works with 256 bits. So it should be able to load four doubles. Let's see the GCC code. And it moves into YMM0, that's the name of the 256 bit register. Moves S2, all four of them, into YMM and adds all four from S1 to YMM0. You will even have the possibility here to add a different register. So you can take one source and one other source and then the destination here. And the result, which is now in YMM0, is put into the destination. And then V0 upper zeroes out the 128 high bits of all the YMM registers. That's to be compatible with the SSE. Okay, let's see what the Intel does. It should do something similar and it's very similar. The only difference is that it has different order. It has S1 first into YMM0, then adds S2 and YMM0 and puts the result in YMM1, then moves the results to destination, RDI, and of course V0 upper. If I ch type make here, we can even debug it. GDB. Want to see the registers here before I start the debugging. And we had D-I-S-I-D-X. Jump over the init. We just see what it did in it. Set A to 0, 1, 2, 3, et cetera. And B. Set B to 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, et cetera. And C is not initialized. It should be zeros. Yep, all zeros. Now let's step into the assembly code. Here we are. Let's see what YMM0 is print dollar ymm0 so you can view it as eight floats but we didn't have floats we had doubles or we can view it as four doubles so let's view it as four doubles okay now let's move the first four as you can see it was s2 which is in rdx first four of s2 was 0, 0 0.5 1 1 5 then add the first four in S1, and if you remember, that was 0, 1, 2, 3. All right, 0, 1, 5, 3, 4, 5, exactly right. And then move the result to RDI. 0 upper, now two of them should be 0 after this instruction. Yes, these two are 0. And return. Now we can see, see if it has been set. If you remember, it was all zeros before, and now the result is here. 0, 1, 5, 3, 4, 5. It all worked good. Now, let's see another experiment, a little more complicated. Here, I wrote another function, which calls v4 add all. If I uncomment it, it takes the same arguments, calls v4 add a number of times, so it should put something in a loop 1024 times, if this we for add is inline. Let's see what it does, make s, and all right, so here's the v for add as before, and here's the v for add all, and as you can see it doesn't call v for add, it has inlined it. So what this do, it sets eax to zero, moves to first four values from the first source array into ymm zeros adds the four values from the second source array to YMM0 and then move the result to the destination. 256 bits, that's 32 bytes, I think. Let's see, just to be sure. There's eight bits. Yeah, 32 bytes. Eight bits in each byte. And then compare what? Yeah, so this is... 1024 times 32 is probably this number here. So this looks correct and let's look at the Intel code. Here it unrolls the loop. It takes four values into XMM0, next four values into XMM2, 
next four values into XML4 and next four values into XML6. It actually takes four of them at once and then adds from S2 next four and puts all of those 64 bytes into the destination and adds into R8. I mean, this could be optimized. You don't have to have one register as index and then another register here as loop counter and the third register also as loop counter. Both RAX and ECX here are superfluous. If this points to S1, uh, think of it like S1 of 0. And if this is 1, think of it as S1 of 1. And 8, that's the scale, so you multiply this by 8. So if, for instance, each of the values is 8 byte long, then this makes sense. Because if you increase this by 1 in each iteration, you will get to the next value in the array. Well, you see here? It only used XMM registers. Why didn't it use YMM registers? Look at the GCC code. That used the YMM registers. It looks like maybe GCC optimized a little bit better here. But it didn't unroll the loops. Sometimes more effective to unroll loops a bit. I must be looking in the wrong page. Ah, here. Here it is. Now it unrolled the loops. So maybe the intercompiler thought it was better to only use XML registers. I, I have experimented a little bit with this and it seems it's not such a huge speed up using YMM registers. So I think this is a little bit faster even, but if you look, look at the C code, if you do more inside the loop here, uh, maybe do some multiplication and maybe some addition and maybe uh, God knows what. Then it will be more efficient using the AVX extensions because you will work on twice as much data in each iteration. What I wanted to do with this uh, video is just show how you can use different compilers like Intel and GCC, compare the assembly code it generates. And especially when it comes to complicated stuff like auto vectorization, it can be interesting to compare and then uh, maybe by hand pick out the best parts from GCC and best parts for Intel and create your own assembly file with optimized code.